Hello everybody, Calamity here, or at least that's what I told everyone on Thanksgiving. Today's video is going to be all about our favorite Steambird reporter, Charlotte. She is a cryo healer, and I know there's plenty of those in the game right now, but she does have her own talents that make her somewhat unique from the other healers. Now in this video, we're going to go over everything, mostly everything you need to know about this character, from her talents to her weapon recommendations, artifact recommendations, constellations, and of course, a little bit of a healing showcase at the end. We have a lot to go over, so let's get started. Now, as I mentioned before, Charlotte is primarily used as a cryo healer uh, for your team. She also does a lot of cryo application herself. So if you're trying to set up, set up some uh, freezes, some melts, uh, she's great for that. But let's go ahead and go over her normal talents first, or her normal attack talent, I should say. And the first thing you might notice is that my talents are not, you know, usually when I do a guide, they're at like level eight. But if we quickly just go look at the talents and the reason for that is because she needs a certain weekly boss's uh, materials, which, you know, I just haven't been able to fight it enough times yet to get uh, characters to level 8. Going back to her normal attack talent, uh, it is pretty much a standard normal attack talent for a catalyst user. She doesn't have anything special here. A normal attack with a 3 hit combo, a charge attack, which does a bit of an AoE. Plunging attack is normal, and then she does do a Numia damage with her attacks. So just keep that in mind if you're using her for exploring or dealing with um, any Uja related enemies, she can activate the, that those sorts of mechanics for you. Now, obviously, her she is a healer, as I mentioned before, so her normal attack talent not going to be really much help for you here. We don't really focus on her normal attack talent just because, you know, that's she doesn't heal from this thing and her damage is pretty lackluster to say the least so you can pretty much just ignore this talent if we are building her primarily as a healer if you're trying to do some weird dps shenanigans then you know of course then maybe you can upgrade it if you want but not for our case we just want her to be uh the best healer as that she can be next up we have her uh elemental skill which is called frame uh framing freezing point composition and it looks like there's quite a lot of text here but it's honestly not that bad. So she uses her camera to take pictures of monsters and monsters that are caught in the camera will take cryo damage over time. And there are two versions of this skill. There's the tap and the hold version. So if you tap, she's just going to take a picture of an, of enemies that are just straight up in front of her in a small-ish AOE and it will deal cryo damage again over time in short intervals. Now, if you do the hold version, if you have played Nahida, it is very similar. Uh, you'll go into like a viewfinder mode and you'll be able to freely control the camera. But she does have a little bit more to it than just, you know, aim the camera at the enemies and let go. If you charge it for a little bit longer, you'll actually see that viewfinder grow into a larger viewfinder, which means a larger AoE. And you basically get the strongest version of her elemental skill. It actually has a... A fancy name it's called the finisher frame uh, which applies the focused impression a uh, debuff to enemies so it's basically just a longer lasting and more damaging version of her elemental skill the downside though is that you do have to charge up the camera uh, to the maximum rate of uh, the maximum AOE to get this effect to go or to work and the problem with that is that, again, you're very vulnerable while you're charging up your camera. So if you're fighting any sort of risky uh, boss fights or like, you know, enemies that are straight up in your face attacking you, you're going to get interrupted and it can be hard to get it off. Um, so you, unless you have a shield or something, but my opinion, it's better just to use the tap version just because it's quicker and you have a, you do have a shorter cooldown. If we look at the skill attributes here, you, you do notice that if you just use a regular version of her skill, it's 12 seconds, but if you decide to go for the longer uh, version, it is 18 seconds. Now, again, only at level 6, so if, if I had Charlotte's uh, talents leveled up a little bit higher, let's say at level 8, you know, obviously all these uh, numbers you're seeing on the screen and all these multipliers you're seeing on the scre screen will be a bit higher. So next up, we're going to have her burst, which is called Still Photo Comprehensive Confirmation. These are really long uh, names, but this one much shorter text description uh, Pretty easy to understand here. You're just gonna do a, a AoE cryo damage when you unleash your little field of cameras that take snapshots of your enemies caught inside 
and it's also going to heal everybody in the party on that initial press of your burst. Afterwards, you're going to have what's called the news flash field. Uh, when you're in that field, it will continuously restore HP to the active character. So only the character that's that you're playing as is going to get healed after that initial uh, burst healing that she does. If there are any monsters in the field as well, they will also take cryo damage. Uh, but don't get too excited about this because it's it's not as damaging as you might think it will it, think it is. Uh, you can take a look at her the damage itself here. Again, it's it's a really small multiplier. Yes, it does hit multiple times, but even overall, if you add up all the multiple times it hits, it's still not that great. Um, but you can see that the initial healing does have quite a chunky um, skill uh, multiplier here. It it's based off her attack. So Charlotte is an attack scaling healer. So if you want more heals, you need to scale or you need to just give her a bunch of attack percentage. And this might make you think, oh, if I'm stacking so much attack percentage, maybe her damage will be okay. Not really. Um, you're still better off, you know, using someone else for your DPS needs, not Charlotte. Uh, she's better off suited as a healer, at least initially. Um, if you do want to use her as a DPS in the future, she's going to need a lot more investment and a lot of teammates to help her out. But for the healing, we just want to get some attack percentage, as I mentioned before. You can see that the continuous regeneration, not nearly as potent as that initial healing and same with the uh, damage. Uh, it's not that much and it only lasts for four seconds, has a cooldown of 20 and unfortunately an energy cost of 80. Uh, I think this is a bit unfortunate for Charlotte. I think her energy cost should be around 60 or 70 for what this burst does, but as they say, it is what it is. So Charlotte is going to need a bunch of energy recharge because you do want her to be casting her burst off cooldown, especially if you're using her with characters that drain their own HP or drain HP of others like Farina or Ricely or characters, uh, you know, like Nouvellet and stuff like that, basically Fontaine characters. Um, and that is pretty much her bur er, her kit. Uh, it's not too complicated. Her skill applies cryo. Her burst that is where the healing comes from. So if you want more heals, level up that burst as much as you can. Next up, let's talk about her passive talents. First one being Moment of Impact. This is going to make it so that your enemies that get marked by your elemental skill, uh, if you defeat them, they will reduce the cooldown of your skill uh, by two seconds. And you can trigger this four times every 12 seconds. So you can mark a bunch of enemies and as you defeat them, you know, she'll have her skill basically uh, ready to go again, which is good for her energy particle regeneration, which means, you know, you cast your skill more often, means you can get more energy and you're chilling. You get more, you means you get your burst back more often as well. <clears throat> so overall, uh, pretty good passive talent there when you're fighting a bunch of weaker enemies or, you know, you're just exploring, but for bosses, um, obviously, they don't summon adds, or most of them don't, so you can have trouble getting value during boss fights. So the next talent is Diversified Investigation, which in my opinion is kind of a miss uh, of a passive talent. It's going to increase her healing by 5, 10, or 15% depending on how many characters in the party are from Fontaine. This does not include herself, so she's not giving herself a free stack of this talent. Now, if you have party members that are not from Fontaine, Instead, Charlotte will instead gain a cryo damage bonus. See, this talent, the problem with that I have with this talent is the later half. Because it makes you think, oh, Charlotte gets all this attack percentage to a scalar healing, and now she has a 15% cryo damage if I pair her up with non Fontaine characters. And it's like, they kind of try to sell her as a DPS to you, but she's not, it's not really going to be good for you. So, in fact, if you want your Charlotte to be the best healer that she can be, it's better to pair her up with um, some Fontaine characters. At least try to get two on there uh, for a 10% healing boost. 5% I feel like is going to be not noticeable, but and then obviously having a full party of Fontaine characters might not be accessible for new players or free-to-play players, depending on uh, who you've pulled for in the past. I do wish instead of cryo damage bonus though that this gave you attack percentage instead, because it could still give her a bit of a damage boost, and then it would also still increase her healing by a bit. But, unfortunate <clears throat> that they decided to go with Cryo Damage Bonus. And last, and certainly least, is her pass her last passive talent called First Person Shudder. 
Now, unfortunately, this doesn't do anything for you combat-wise. It doesn't provide any buffs or exploration-wise. All this does is allows you to zoom in when you take photos with Charlotte. So if you're one of those types of people that loves to take photos, screenshots of you know your adventures of Teva, and you're like, man, I really wish I could just zoom in. Well, Charlotte's gonna be that character for you, I guess, but. You know, as someone who's focused on the combat and the exploration conveniences, this does absolutely nothing for you. And you will need what's called the Special Analysis Zoom Lens. I forget which, um, I believe there's like a quest you can do where you obtain this gadget and you're going to have to use it while using Charlotte. So you can't even use this by itself. You do have to have a special item. Uh, someone in the comments can correct me on which quest or help me out on which quest actually gives you this gadget because I'm... Not familiar. Moving on to her weapons, uh, Charlotte being a support character, she does have access to quite a lot of weapons you can give to her. Um, I gave her the Favonius Codex. This is like one of the best support weapons in the entire game. Uh, a lot of support characters use it and they all function similarly. So if you are familiar with the Favonius weapons, the Favonius Codex is the catalyst version of that weapon basically it's going to give you a bunch of energy recharge as a subset which is good and the effect itself is that you're going to need to invest just a, a bit of your subsets into crit rate and when you do crit you're going to generate extra energy not just for charlotte but for your entire team and you can do this once every six seconds now keep in mind you do have to be on the field to trigger this effect you can't just use her uh, elemental skill or her burst and then swap to another character and then expect uh, the weapon effect to go off at some point. She does need to be on the field, wait till you see the extra particles, and then you can swap uh, to the character that needs uh, the energy the most. Um, but if you are looking for other free-to-play options uh, for your weapon choice, I can recommend the prototype Amber. Unfortunately, the HP percent uh, substat here does nothing for Charlotte. That's not how she scales her healing, but this weapon is free to play friendly since you can craft it and the weapons effect gives charlotte a bunch of much needed energy when you use her burst as well as give her additional healing she will heal all of your party members will regenerate six percent hp every two seconds during the uh the duration you use your burst so this is really really nice um if your charlotte just needs a bit more healing to help keep the team sustained especially again if you're using her with on tank characters who have a, a tendency to drain their HP, or if you're using Farina who drains your entire team's HP, uh, the prototype Amber is going to be a really good counter for that. It wouldn't be uh, a complete free-to-play friendly guide if I didn't mention the Thrilling Tales of Dragon Slayers. This is again a very very good option for a lot of support characters. This makes it so that the next character you switch to will receive a gigantic 48% attack boost. Now keep in mind you want to make sure you keep uh, the DPS in mind before you use this on your Charlotte. But like, if you're using like Reesley, um, he'll be fine with it. But if you are using someone like Nuvolet or Farina and you want to buff their damage, this attack percentage is not going to do it for you since they scale off HP. So just keep in mind who your DPS of choice is before you use the Thrilling Tales, uh, since a lot of characters these days do scale with HP percentage. Now, there are a couple... Um, other weapon options I can recommend, one of them being the Oath Sworn Eye. Unfortunately, this was a limited time event weapon. So those of you that did play back in the day and you did explore Enkonomiya when it was first released, you did get the Oath Sworn Eye. This is going to be a pretty good uh, weapon option for uh, Charlotte because again, it gives you attack percentage as a subset, which means more healing. And when you use your skill, you're going to have increased energy recharge of up to 48% if you were able to get this weapon to refinement 5. So this is also a pretty good weapon, but unfortunately it's very just, it's just very limited. And, you know, maybe in the future Hoyoverse will allow newer players to have access to these limited time weapons. And, you know, if you do watch this video in the future, then hey, you have a, a solid choice for Charlotte. Next up, let's talk about different artifact sets for your Charlotte and, you know, since she is a support, there are plenty of options for you. The first one being Noblesse Oblige. This is mainly used because when you use your burst, she's going to grant an attack percentage buff to her entire team. 
Now, again, keep in mind who your teammates are. If you're using, again, I'm going to use, you know, Farina and Nuvolet as examples here. They are HP scaling characters, so the 20% attack boost does nothing for them. But the 20% attack boost does do something for your Charlotte, since it will improve her healing as well. Now, if you don't want to go the Noblesse Oblige, what other uh, sets can you go for? Another great set is the Tenacity of the Millilith. This is going to give your entire party a 20% increased attack boost as well as 30% increased shield strength. So if you do have a shield on the team, it's going to be a little bit more beefier. Again, her elemental skill just does a bunch of cryo damage uh, in intervals. So she'll be able to keep this buff active. She, can, she should be able to keep this buff active for most of the time. Now, if you're looking to boost Charlotte's personal damage a little bit so she's contributing something, um, if you do get her healing up to some really good numbers, you can give her the Ocean Hued Clam. If you are unfamiliar with this set, it does give you a healing set bonus uh, at two piece, but the four piece effect, effect excuse me, has a really, really long uh, skill description here. So just to condense it for you, as you heal your teammates, you're going to enhance what's called a sea dyed foam. And after some time, that sea dyed foam will explode. And it can do up to 30,000 damage, depending on how much healing you've done. So if you're, you know, if you are using Charlotte as your main healer and she's just healing everybody on your team constantly, which she should be, uh, you'll be able to get a bunch of damage from this. So she's contributing something um, to the team as well. Uh, you could also use, although it's not really recommended if you feel like your Charlotte's healing just isn't enough. You can give her a Maiden's Beloved. This is just going to improve those healing numbers by a bunch. Um, and lastly, if you don't feel like farming for any four piece effect, you can just give her some mixture of like two piece Emblem of Severed Fate, two piece Maiden's Beloved, two piece Ocean Eve Clam, um, or any two piece attack percentage um, artifact set piece you have lying around to improve her heals. So she has a bunch of options when it comes to choosing an artifact set for her. And honestly, they're all going to be good. It just depends on what team you want to use her on and what her teammates, uh, how her teammates do damage and stuff like that. So, and if you're still not sure what to pick, just go with the Noblesse Oblige because it's usually never a bad choice. And the 20% attack boost can be used by her, even if her other teammates don't really need the attack buff. Now that you've settled on an artifact set, what are we looking for in terms of substats? And that one's pretty easy as well. You're just going to want some energy recharge. Uh, try to get, you know, as much as you can. 180% would be a good minimum. She does have a 80 cost uh, burst, which is, again, a bit unfortunate. So you do need to invest a bit heavily into some energy recharge. Uh, again, if you looked at the weapon recommendations and you are using a Favonius Codex, that's a great weapon. Uh, because of the substat of energy recharge, it gives a bunch to help alleviate your energy recharge needs when you're building her for your artifacts. Um, the other stat you are looking for is attack percentage. Obviously, we just went over how that's how she heals. So more attack percentage, the better. Now, if you are using a Favonius Codex, I should re remind you that you do want some crit rate in your subset. So try to fit that in there if you can. Um, after that, it's pretty much just whatever you know, filler stats you can try to put on her. You can try to get some Elemental Mastery, or sorry, you can try to get some flat attack and then maybe some like crit damage or Elemental Mastery, I guess. Now let's talk about the main stats for the Sands, Goblet, and the Circlet. So if you're going for the Sands, your options are either get a good attack percentage one or a good energy recharge one, whichever one you think you need more of. Uh, if you are having trouble getting some energy recharge on the substats, then, you know, energy recharge is going to be your best bet. Or you didn't give her an energy recharge weapon. For the goblet, we do not need a cryo damage bonus goblet. You can just give her an attack percentage one. Again, energy recharge is the subset you're looking for, some crit rate, and anything else that you can fit on there. For the circlet, you have uh, a bunch of options. You can either give her healing bonus, um, like I did here, and mine got a nice little substat of attack percentage increase there, so this is a really good circlet for Charlotte. Speaking of attack percentage, that's the other main stat you can go for, so 
If you have a good attack percentage um, circlet with some energy recharge, that's also going to be a good option for you. Um, and if you are struggling with the Favonius Codex and it's just not proccing enough to your liking, then you can go all out with a crit rate main stat circlet to really help boost your um, chances of proccing the Favonius Codex. But I feel like as a cryo unit, she shouldn't really need to. I would only recommend it if you're really struggling, I guess. Um, because you can pair her with another cryo unit. And you will get the cryo resonance buff, which is a free 15% crit rate. And that's already a, a nice uh, boost in your chances there. Next up, we're going to go over her constellations. And these are pretty, these are going to go pretty fast because uh, they don't really do that much. But they're, they're nice to have, of course. Um, C1 is called a need to verify facts. All this is going to do is just make it so that you will heal even fast or not faster, but you will heal even more uh, when you use Charlotte's uh, burst. So it's basically just more heals. Nothing wrong with that. Next is a duty to pursue the truth. This is going to make it so that when you hit enemies with your elemental skill, the more enemies you hit, it's going to increase Charlotte's own attack by 10, 20, or up to 30% more attack for 12 seconds, which will translate into more healing. C3 and C5 increase her skill and burst. Um, sorry, her burst and then her skill. So the burst giving us more um, healing, which is great. And then the skill giving us... Uh, a bit more damage, I guess. C4, like most other characters these days, is a great way to funnel some energy into your Charlotte. This makes it so that her burst, when her burst hits uh, an opponent that's marked by her skill, uh, it will deal a little bit more damage, but also just restore energy to Charlotte, which is what we care about. Uh, and you can store, restore two energy to Charlotte five times every 20 seconds. So basically 10 energy. So Essentially, you're making that burst cost what I wanted it to be earlier, which is about 70. So this should really, really help with your energy recharge needs. C6 is called a summation of interest. This one is going to be use any character's normal or charge attacks on an enemy that's affected by her skill. Charlotte will do a AoE cryo damaging attack that's coordinated with your character. It also does heal any active character within the AoE of her within the AoE of the attack by 42% of Charlotte's attack. And this effect can only be triggered once every six seconds for both the damaging effect and the healing effect. So just keep that in mind. Uh, you'll get a nice little AoE damage thingy from Charlotte uh, when you use a normal or a charge attack uh, with her skill. So it's a little bit of a setup, but I guess it's just more cryo application and a bit more healing for Charlotte. And you know, the nice thing about four star constellations that is that at least these are obtainable for free to play or low spenders because you can expect to see charlotte in a future banner alongside some other characters uh that you're probably going to want to pull for maybe <laughs> so uh and not only that she'll be in the standard banner in the next update so starting in 4.3 you can actually start to pull for her uh and she'll maybe randomly show up in your standard pulls next up let's talk team compositions for your charlotte now, the great thing about a healer in any of these types of games is that, well, you know, she's a healer, so she can work with a bunch of other characters and it, she's great because that's her job is to keep your team from, you know, not being dead. And she does that pretty well. So feel free to use her with whomever you want to. Now, based off her passive talents, it does feel like Hoyaverse definitely wants you to use her with Fontaine characters because of the additional healing bonus that she receives when doing so and one of her best teammates and you know funny enough they're on the same banner is farina and if you guys are not familiar with farina's kit when you use her skill and she has her bubble buddies attack an enemy she will actually drain your entire team's hp so charlotte is a good counter to that hp drain she's able to uh basically just regenerate a bunch of your health uh, when you use her burst so you can have this whole like hp draining and then you're gaining hp so as i'm sure you guys are familiar with at this point now a lot of fontaine characters have this weird mechanic where you know if you lose hp or every time you lose hp and every time you gain hp some buff will happen some effect will happen just like the hunter set that you can farm for as well 
um, you get a bunch of crit rate every time you lose or gain HP. So Charlotte is going to help get you to the maximum stacks of whatever buff it is, whether it be an artifact set, a weapon, or a character's uh, talent. Uh, Charlotte and Farina are definitely going to help you get to the maximum really, really quickly. And even if you don't have Farina, again, you have plenty of choices. Again, she's a healer, so as I mentioned before, you can set her up in a Melt team, a Freeze team, a Hyper Fridge team, and they're all going to be good. So let's get you some examples so just so you can see. All right, so this would be an example of a Hyper Fridge team with Charlotte. If you are unfamiliar with a Hyper Fridge team, uh, basically Cryo does not screw up a Hyper Bloom reaction because... Cryo does has nothing to do with Dendro, right? So occasionally, because Jing Cho applies so much Hydro, Charlotte can occasionally freeze some of the enemies you're fighting against. So if you're fighting against a group of enemies with Hyper Bloom, you'll see some freezes in there as well. So you'll have the safety of freeze, as well as the you know the very hard hitting Hyper Blooms damaging your enemies. So it's a nice little combo there. And she does provide her own healing um, if Kuki Shinobu's healing is just not enough for your team's sustainability. So really nice team right here. And obviously you can swap out Nahida for another Dendro Applier like Kali, Dendro Traveler, uh, even Yao Yao uh, could be an, an additional um, Dendro Applier if you don't have Nahida. Now here's just yet another iteration of the international team. Again, this is a very free-to-play friendly team, so... Uh, we have Jeanling and Benny here to basically give your entire team an attack boost, which is more healing for Charlotte. Not to mention Bennett's ult, also giving a huge attack boost to anyone in it. Um, so if Charlotte's on the field, she'll do she'll gain a bunch of attack uh, this way, and she's going to do a bunch more healing. And of course, everyone shooting off their elemental bursts and their elemental skills and all these elements are happening. You're going to see a bunch of numbers on the screen. You're going to see some melts, you're going to see some vaporizes, you're going to see some freezes, and it's going to be a great time. Um, of course, you can also replace Jing Cho with a Anmo character like uh, Sucrose or Kazuha if you have him for easier grouping. And of course, Kazuha, provides, Kazuha and Sucrose both provide a buff to the team, although they're both different uh, buffs, it's still going to help you overall. Next up is a freeze team. Uh, you can replace, I know there's a lot of five stars here. But you can replace Ganyu with Ayaka if you have her. Um, Mona can be replaced with Kakomi if you have her as well. I, I just don't, so I have Mona in the spot. Um, or any other Hydro applicator of your choice. Uh, and then of course Kazuha here to help swirl with Charlotte's damage. And so the rotation would be to apply a bunch of Cryo via Charlotte skill. Have Kazuha swirl it. Then have Mona freeze. Um, all the enemies that are applicable for it and then Ganyu will just AoE them down and should be You know easy pickings for the team and should be a good time And again, you can swap in Ayaka if you want more single target for bosses and the rotation is pretty much the same Let's talk about this because I know someone out there is gonna want to try it now as I mentioned before Charlotte is not great as a DPS on her own. She's gonna need a ton of help if you actually do want to someday build her as a a dps one of those ways to help her is shenha who buffs cryo damage by a ton if you build her properly you're gonna see some big big numbers increase for anybody even like we've seen in the past shenha buffing things like diona's elemental skill to absurdly high numbers and changyu's burst to also absurdly high numbers so i expect her to do the same with charlotte now, of course, if you're a whale and you actually have, you know, some good constellations for Shenha, you got her five star weapon and stuff like that, then expect a big, big buff to your Charlotte's damage overall. Kazuha here to swirl uh, Cryo either via Shenha or Charlotte's own Cryo application. And then you swirl it, you do his burst. He's going to provide a ton, ton of damage uh, to your Charlotte as well. And Farina being one of the best buffers in the game now. Again, if you've built her properly and you have the bubble buddies on the field and you have her burst active and especially if you wailed for Farina's banner and you got a lot of fanfare going, then yeah, Charlotte's actually going to start doing some scary numbers in terms of damage here. So it is possible uh, to get Charlotte to do some, some DPS shenanigans if you really want to. Just be prepared that you got to invest 
uh, heavily into some other characters for it to happen. And of course, for the whole DPS setup, you would have to change out her weapon for a more five-star damagey weapon. Um, I'm sure there's plenty of options for that at this point. <clears throat> and yeah, you'd have to get a team something like this uh, to really get Charlotte's damage going. Um, honestly, the only downside to a team like this is that it's better to get a melt setup because you know melt being the better damaging um, elemental reaction here and, and freeze not working on bosses but <laughs> honestly there's just not enough teammates if there was like a fifth teammate i'd throw in like a jean ling or something for more aoe pyro damage and then you can melt off that with charlotte's um, own attacks normally i would take you to the spiral abyss and this is where i showcase the character and, and how well they can do in end game content and stuff like that but the problem is We've built Charlotte as a healer and not so much as a DPS. So the problem would be, well, it's you wouldn't really be seeing Charlotte do her thing other than just like heal. So let's pop her burst. So you can see Ayaka went from like half to full. Kazuha was literally like one HP and went to like three fourths of his HP. And Farina, because Farina is an HP scaling character, she actually has a lot more HP than say Ayaka and Kazuha. Uh, we can see that she was able to go from like a quarter of her HP almost to uh, three-fourths of her health bar. So pretty good healing from the burst. Uh, the problem is that's her best healing. So that's why a prototype Amber is also a really good option because it would continue to heal uh, your entire team uh, as well. But again, the Favonius Codex also going to be a solid option because you're going to need uh, that extra energy and those extra energy recharge stats for more burst uptime. Since uh, you're definitely going to want to try to get that burst as much as you can. Before we end this video, I'm just going to share my two cents on the character. Um, I don't think that, you know, that Charlotte's going to be some brand new meta defining four star character, unfortunately. She's very uh, niche, so to speak. And again, we already have a lot of cryo healers in the game. We have Chi Chi. We have Diona, we have uh, Mika as well. All cryo healers in the game, and they're all solid characters. Charlie is no different, um, but she is definitely the go-to cryo healer if you're doing any sort of Fontaine shenanigans. Because as I mentioned before, the whole HP increase decrease thing seems to be what Hoyoverse is going to do for the uh, future of Fontaine characters. Um, when it comes to designing their kit so charlotte synergizes well with that because of her burst healing multiple times in short doses which means you're gonna get a bunch of hp increases so whatever buff you're trying to get you'll definitely get the maximum value of it from charlotte's burst alone but not only that i think charlotte is also just gonna be a great character for new uh new players or returning players um if you don't have a Cryo healer, like if you don't have any of the characters I just mentioned, you definitely will because Chi Chi is going to haunt you in your pulls. But uh, <laughs> Charlotte is a great healer just to have because, again, healers being really important, they save you from having to cook food and stuff like that. So she's a great starter character and just great character to synergize with other Fontaine characters overall. But outside of that, she's definitely just more of the, you know, she's not like a bad character. It, it, again, it's just that we have so many similar characters uh, like her in the game already. And if you do get some constellations for her, well, she's just going to end up healing even more and doing a bit of damage. So there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I just think she's just, I would place her like if we were doing like a tier list, I would just place her overall in a solid B tier. Um, she does her job, which is to heal your team, and she does it really well. Just a little bit unfortunate that she does take up, or that she does need a bunch of energy to do so. But if you do get her Constellation 4 in the future, or if you've got it while you're trying to pull for Farina, then it's going to be a little bit more manageable for you uh, when it comes to her energy recharge needs. And with that being said, that is going to be a wrap on this guide. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any other additional questions or additional things that I didn't explain well. Feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to try to help you out and try to answer your questions. That is going to be it for me. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.